Hi everybody, um, this is one of a series of uh, vlogs about air pollution um, and today I'm going to be talking about flying um, and why you might want to wear a face mask while you're flying. Um, this is quite an unusual topic perhaps um, for a vlog about air pollution um, but it's something that I think is quite interesting and um, potentially quite important um, so I thought, thought I'd uh, talk about it. Uh, when we normally think about air pollution, we're thinking about the smoke that comes out of factories um, or diesel fumes um, from cars and lorries. Um, but when we're flying, we encounter a different sort of air pollution. Um, and I'm going to talk about two aspects of that really today. Um, the first of those is um, being in contact with bacteria and viruses um, from the other people that we travel with. Um, and the other one is something called aerotoxic syndrome, which I'll come to in a minute. So we're all pretty used to being able to jump on an aeroplane, whether it be just to um, travel to the neighbouring province or halfway around the world, or even all the way around the world. Um, and unfortunately, or maybe fortunately for the environment's sake, we can't all afford a private jet. So we travel on commercial airliners, um, and in that environment, we're sharing the air that we breathe um, with everyone else on that plane, which can obviously be a few hundred people. And so because we're sharing the air, we're sharing the bacteria and viruses, or the germs, um, that the other people are breathing out. Now for most people, and most of the time, that's pretty harmless. Um, you know, we've all got hundreds of different bacteria and viruses that we have on our skin, um, that we have in our airways. Um, and say so to most people, most of the time, they're pretty harmless. There are a group of people um, for whom it can be really, really dangerous, um, and I will hopefully do a vlog about that later. Um, but you can be the unlucky one who breathes in the cold virus that you haven't been in contact with before, um, and then a couple of days later you've got a stinking cold and your holiday's ruined. Um, I meant to mention at the beginning I've got some notes, um, so I will be, be referring to those a little bit just because um, I didn't want to forget anything um, that I wanted to tell you today. Um, so I hope that's not too distracting. So aeroplanes actually, they re recirculate the air that we breathe. They, they don't sort of carry lots of, of clean, fresh air up with them. Um, and actually the air that, that they provide us with is usually pretty clean. Um, modern aeroplanes have HEPA filters. Um, which can recirculate the air um, that we're breathing about 20 to 30 times per hour um, and filter it in, in between recirculating it. And those modern HEPA filters can um, allegedly remove 99.9% .9 of bacteria from the air, so that's good news. Unfortunately, not all airlines have those um, good modern filters and it's really difficult to find out which ones do and which ones don't. As a rule, I'd think that the um, more modern airlines, um, you know, those with the modern fleets would have the, the good quality filters, perhaps the older ones, the more budget airlines um, might not do. So that's something that's worth bearing in mind when you're booking your flights. The other thing to think about is, is where you're actually sitting on the aeroplane. So the aeroplane is usually divided up into compartments um, when it comes to airflow through the plane. Um, and usually if you're at the front of a compartment, which might be a bulkhead seat or right at the front of the plane, you're likely to get the air as it's coming out of the filters, so the cleanest air. Um, but if you're sitting further back, um, you might then not be getting such clean air. Um, you're getting air that's already been breathed in and breathed out um, by one of the other passengers. Basically, the filters can't filter all the air before it reaches you. That wouldn't work unless we all were sitting on the aeroplane, breathing in through our own individual oxygen masks, which all, all came out straight out from the filter. And that means that you're still possibly exposed to you know, the, the bacteria that, or germs that are coming from the man in 38A sneeze or, or you know, the, the lady in 12F who's coughing for the entire flight. You're potentially breathing in those germs. The other problem while we're flying, and this compounds this issue, is that the air we breathe is low humidity. Um, and when air that you breathe is low humidity, it dries out the airways, it dries out your nasal passengers, passages. And one of their function is, is to add um, moisture into the air, um, and that um, prevents uh, 
that helps stop the bacteria or the germs being able to access your airways. The mucus that you produce in your nose, which is nice and moist as you know, um, helps to trap germs. But if that dries out, that process can't work. You've also got little hairs in the lining of your airways um, and they don't work so well when they're dried out. So basically what that means is that air that's not got enough humidity in it increases your risk of um, an upper respiratory tract infection or, or a cold basically. Um, so you're already at increased risk, you then put in the fact that you might be breathing in more bacteria and viruses because you're next in really close proximity to a lot of people um, and, and, and that's why you know there is an increased risk. So the other thing that, or the other main part that I wanted to talk about today was something called aerotoxic syndrome. Now this is a bit of a contentious issue, so some people think it exists, um, other people um, aren't so sure that th there really is anything um, that could be grouped together and be called aerotoxic syndrome. Now what it is, is that in most aeroplanes the air is taken directly from the engines. You know, the engines are whizzing around lots of air so that's actually a good way of, of bringing in um, air into the aeroplanes and this is called bleed air. There's one exception which is the Boeing 787 which uses something called bleed free technology and you'll have to go to a different vlog to find out what that means um, and what the risk is with bleed air is that you can get some of those fumes from the engine or hydraulic fluid from the engine coming in to the air that we're breathing inside the cabin of the aeroplane. People have known about these things called bleed air events since the 1950s, so it's not a new issue, um, but it's, as I say, it's, it's just an issue of, of how much of a problem it is, what the health issues are associated with it, and whether, you know, there really is any, any strong evidence that it, it causes a problem. Um, the Civil Aviation Authority in the UK has had 1,300 reports of um, these sorts of events since 2010 and that's just within oh, from one British airline and of these events there's two types so there's one off where you get sort of a large volume of um, contaminated air coming into the aircraft and then there's sort of long-term um, low-level chronic exposure so that would be the sort of thing that might affect um, people working in um, aeroplanes so um, the pilots and the crew or um, frequent flyers so if, if you're traveling a lot for business that could be something that potentially could be an issue for you. Um, the symptoms of, of these uh, problems are things like migraine, fatigue, aches and pains in your muscles and joints, um, breathing problems and digestive problems and you'll see from that that it you know there's a lot of different symptoms they affect different body systems and often in in situations like that it's really difficult to pinpoint what the actual cause is. And there was a review that looked into you know a lot of cases all the evidence that was gathered and they concluded that there, there wasn't really a particular issue because the levels of chemicals in these events were actually lo lower than the accepted widely accepted safe levels and they concluded that perhaps um, what was actually happening is that were people that were having hyperventilation episodes or had particular sensitivity to smells and then they were associating it with this sort of potential issue um, and, and attributing it to perhaps being exposed to fumes. Um, but anyway, whether it's a real issue or not, it's something to be aware of and it is important to think about the quality of air we're breathing when we're in that confined environment where we're dependent on being provided with our air by, by the airline. So I wanted to give you some um, suggestions um, for what you could do um, to help protect yourself whilst you're flying. And one of the main things that you might want to consider is wearing um, an anti-pollution face mask, or they're also known as respirators. Um, and what these do is, is they're the usually sort of um, face masks that fit um, close onto your face. Um, I'm not talking about, you know, a plastic mask, anything like that. I'm talking about a cloth mask, but with um, high quality, specialised materials inside it um, that filters out the air particles that you're breathing. So it needs to have a filter in it, not just be a simple fabric um, 
mask. Um, and I would consider using one with something called N99 certification. Um, and what that is, is it means that it filters out 99% of, of the small particles in the air that you're breathing. Um, if you are thinking about getting a, um, an anti-pollution mask or a respirator, um, you need to think about the size. It needs to fit closely onto your face. Um, there need not to be big gaps around it because obviously you'll just breathe in around the side of it if that were the case. It needs to be comfortable because if you're going to wear it on a long haul flight, you need to wear it for as much of that flight as possible. Um, otherwise, you know, you'll, um, you won't be reducing the risk for the time that, that you're not wearing it. Um, obviously, that's not the only measure that you can take um, to protect your health whilst you're flying. Um, so the first one um, that I also wanted to measure is don't travel if you're sick. Um, you won't feel great. You know, I've, I've told you that there are increased risks because of being exposed to um, bacteria and viruses. Um, also, if you're tired, you know, if you're having eating on different patterns, then your immune function might not be as good. So if you're already sick to start with, you're not going to make the situation better. Um, and the other passengers won't thank you either. Um, also, keep yourself well hydrated. Um, so make sure you drink plenty of water. Um, avoid caffeine and alcohol because they both increase dehydration. Um, and you could also consider using a nasal um, spray a saline nasal spray. Um, what that does is it helps to moisten um, the nasal passages um, and as I say if you keep the mucus in there wet rather than dry um, that can help help the mucus to clear any bacteria that, that do enter or viruses that do enter. It can help those little hairs do their job properly um, and so it should be able to reduce the risk of infection and it also feels more comfortable as well. Um, and then the third thing um, is take a hand sanitizer with you. So, you know, one of those alcohol gels. Um, there, you, there is a risk of, of catching infections from touching surfaces that other people have touched. Um, and if you carry a hand sanitizer, you know, you can just use that regularly to clean your hands um, to make sure that, you, that you're not picking up bacteria and viruses that way. Um, the other thing, the last thing that you might be able to do, um, depends on the airline, um, is choose your seats carefully when you are travelling. So as I say, um, if you choose to sit as near to the front of the aeroplane as possible, and particularly near to the front of a compartment, um, so bulkhead seats uh, right at the front of the plane if you can afford it, um, and, uh, and, and that means that you're more likely to be getting the, the, you know, the clean air just as it's coming in from the filters. Um, but obviously we, are, we can't all sit at the front because um, there isn't any space. Um, if you, if you uh, follow these measures, um, then you should still be able to enjoy your flight. It's you know, nothing, nothing too major. Um, and hopefully you then arrive at your destination um, as healthy as you started. Um, and don't put other people at risk either. So enjoy your flights. Um, I really look forward to any questions or comments about this. Um, as I said in my introductory um, vlog, um, if anyone's got any topics that they'd like me to talk about, then if you let me know, um, and I'll try and do a vlog about those as well. And uh, I'll see you soon. Bye.